So good evening, everyone, and thanks for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, tonight, um, I'm going to do something I haven't done in a while, and that's actually go through more of a prepared presentation um, rather than just looking at charts and doing those kind of things. Um, you know, it wasn't all that long ago that um, I realized that I had been involved in trading for 30 years. And um, it, it's amazing to me how fast time goes. Um, <clears throat> hey, see, yes, you're at the right place. And so doing this for as long as I have, um, obviously I've been teaching and coaching and working with individuals for a long time. And I've, I've learned some, a lot of things about me and I've learned a lot of things that I believe are truths about trading that I want to share tonight. Everyone has a little bit different experience with trading, so I don't want to say that all of these, all of these would be perfectly true for you, but I think by and large they will be um, as we go along. So if you have some questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best. But if we can stay on the topic um, uh, tonight, I would truly appreciate it. So first off, let's, let's dig in. And one of the things that I realized early on in my trading is, well, honestly, <laughs> tell you the truth, it wasn't all that early on. It took me a long time to um, get myself straightened out here in trading. I suffered from a lot of, you know, um, ego breaking rules, um, no plan, you know, want to get rich quick, all of those kind of things that most young guys, most young people suffer from overall. And it took me a long time to realize that the person that was creating most of my trouble in my trading was me, that I was the problem. And I found this to be um, an absolute truth in, in trading. When I work with other traders, um, people, you know, people get a hold of me to work with them individually um, to try and um, help them improve their trading. <clears throat> and you know, it's the same set of circumstances that seem to plague most people. Um, where they, they're they running into um, lots of headaches, lots of problems, frustration all the time. You know, at the end of the day, feeling absolutely worn out or feeling completely despondent because nothing's working like it should. We, we go from highs to lows because we have a winning trade and we're on a high and then the market takes it all the back and now we're at a low. And we hate ourselves for making money because we should have let it run a little bit longer. And we hate ourselves for not getting into a trade that we thought was going to be a good trade. And we hate ourselves because we lost money on a trade because we, we, we didn't manage it correctly. And it ends up turning into this vicious cycle where, you know, it's pretty hard to, um, for a trader um, without a, a standard to work from um, to just be in this loop of constant and never-ending frustration. I call it trader purgatory. It, it's where you just, no matter what you try, no matter what you do, it's like um, you're working really hard, you know, your legs are moving really fast, but there's no movement. Your, your, your account's not growing, things aren't getting better. And when you finally reach that point, and it's that point of ultimate frustration or where you think it's time to quit, or you start saying things like, oh, the market's rigged, there's no way anybody can make money in the market, and those kind of things, you may have finally reached that point where you are willing to change. I reached that point after, oh, I, I think it was probably seven, eight years in my trading, 
um, I finally reached that point that I realized that I was the problem and that I needed to change. There really wasn't anything wrong with the market. There wasn't anything wrong with the things that uh, necessarily I was doing um, in in my strategies or those kind of things. There's a million and one different strategies in the market that can make money, providing you follow that strategy and you follow a set of rules and you stay disciplined. But unfortunately, um, when we are dealing with our money, it becomes very personal. It becomes very emotional uh, for us because we're obviously emotionally tied to our money and when we lose it, well, then we start reacting. We react erratically. And it creates this cycle of doom that is really hard to stop. So I want to ask any, anybody in the room right now, um, is anybody in here feel like, you know, you're kind of at the end of the rope here that, you know, you're looking for some ideas, you're looking for some change, you don't want to give up, you're just stubborn enough, you don't want to give up. But at the same time, something's going to have to change. And you're willing to do whatever it takes to change. Because if you're there now, or if you're willing to say, I need that help right now, we can fix these things. Okay. But we've got to be willing to change and we've got to be willing to buckle down a little bit in our trading ideas. So first, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I spend a lot of time doing is working with people and teaching people on different things, different strategies, you know, how to use <laughs> how to use their software sometimes. Um, and one of the things that, you know, um, I think everyone needs to focus in on, we, we all want to run before we can walk. Okay, we want to walk before we can crawl. Okay, and we learn about trading, we, we go to a class, we get all fired up, we, we, we jump into the market the next morning, whether we're really ready or not, and boy, we have to start trading because if I'm not, if I'm not live taking risk in the market, I can't make any money, so I gotta go right now, I gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. And you gotta think about this for a second. How many of you have thought about this, maybe not, you may not be in that case right now, or you may be in that situation right now, where you're trading, but you really don't even know how to use your charting software. You know some of the basics, but you don't know how to get much out of it. Because you haven't taken the time to learn. Don't know how to use your trading software, don't know how to, how to place specific orders, because I don't know how to do that. but you're running full speed and you still don't even have your shoes on. Okay, so think about this guys. We have to have, uh, traders need a set of tools just like anyone else, okay? And we need to take the time to learn those tools. Now, it doesn't necessarily take a whole long period of time to learn those tools. As a matter of fact, I would tell you that because software and things like that upgrade so quickly in this day and age, I'm never done learning. I am always learning something new about trading and that's gonna happen clear up to, to, to the day I drop dead. I'm gonna be learning about trading because I don't ever plan to retire. <laughs> um, so I wanna encourage everyone, <clears throat> if, if you're trying to run full speed in the market and putting yourself at risk in the market, you know, uh, be, be aware of how to use your software. You know, they have people at those firms that teach you how to do it. They have videos, they have education to teach you how to use it. That's how I learned. I spent lots and lots of evenings 
lots and lots of weekends locked into a computer screen watching a video learning some new aspect of how I could improve my understanding of the tools that I use okay so think about that for a second it's kind of like walking into walking into a casino walking up to a craps table and just throwing money on the table and having no idea what the rules are, knowing, having no idea what's a win or a loss, you know, what do you think the chances are you're going to win? It's pretty slim, right? So first things first, guys. Um, we have to learn to crawl before we can walk. Okay, learn those first things first. And if you need to join a, a group like our group, Hit Run Candlesticks or someplace else, where you can get that education, you can get those questions answered faster. You have live um, education throughout a trading day to help you um, look at a chart, decipher a chart, <clears throat> uh, plan correctly. A trade then get involved because remember you're in a a sea of whales whales and great big sharks and they want your money you're just this little teeny tiny minnow flight floating around in there trying to move quick enough to avoid all of these big guys that are wanting to chomp down on you and if we're not prepared to understand how to do things with our software, then we're really setting ourselves up for failure. Okay, so take the time it takes. If you have to stop trading for a week or two to get that education or to join a, a, a group or to, um, you know, whatever it is that you need to do, find a mentor, get that first step done. Okay, make sure you understand how to do it before you run in there and just start risking money. Okay, so education, do some paper trading practice. Mike Peterson in here. Mike Peterson practiced his paper trading before he went live. He practiced for a year. And then the first year he went live in his trading, he had a 60% return in his, in his account. Now, you tell me, guys, was his practice worth it? <laughs> and he's humble, too. <laughs> so think about that, guys. Um, make sure you are prepared to go to battle because remember when we go into the market we are working against every single other trader in the market okay institutions have the most money and trust me their people are trained they work them to death training them they know what their rules are they know what their guidelines are they know what they're here to do every single day that they sat down in front of their screen. Okay, so make sure that you are at least competent with the tools that you're using before you jump into the market. Next thing is kind of discovering who, who you are. Who am I? You know, um, a lot of people come to trading with this idea <clears throat> that they want to get rich quick and they and, and and it's a place to do it and they can fire their boss and I'm gonna have all this freedom of being a trader I can do all these things I don't have to go to work every day but how many of you in the room believe that's true after you've been trading for a while trading is work right it's a job we have to put in the time to work, okay? It's not a freebie, it's not easy money. Uh, think about this guys, if, 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 if it were easy to make money in the market, there'd be no market. And, and if everybody online that you see is actually getting rich like they say they are, there must be 
massive amounts of people going broke every single day because they never seem to lose a trade. How many believe that stuff is true? Remember guys, every time you buy a stock, an option or anything, there's someone on the other side of that trade that's against you. For every buyer, there's a seller. For every seller, there's a buyer. And at any given day, only half of them win. That's it. Half win, half lose every single day. Not everybody's getting rich. Okay, so we need to know who we are as a trader and we need to focus in on something. So one of the things I talk about a lot of times is um, the lifestyle of a trader. And, and that's people want this lifestyle. They want that freedom to not have to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and go to work and, you know, listen to the boss gripe and all of those kind of things. But the truth of the matter is, when you work for yourself in your own trading business, you're probably going to work more hours than you ever worked for any, any other employer. How many has found that to be true? Type of why. You're going to work harder. You're going to study more than you ever have. It is hard work to be successful at trading. Okay. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to decide what kind of a trader we are. Now, a lot of people um, start with this idea of freedom. I'm going to trade stocks or I'm going to trade options and that kind of thing. And, 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 and they start with one perception. And before they know it, they're going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until from the time they get up in the morning to the time they go to bed at night, they're in front of screens. Is that the freedom you were looking for? Is that the lifestyle you were looking for? Is that what you thought trading was going to be? No, right? Most people don't think about that. That here I am staring at charts and I'm watching this candle move up and down and trying to decide if, if I can put money at risk or not in it. Because every single tick in the market is, it means something to me now. Well, one of the dirty little secrets in the industry of trading is day traders, and this is the honest to goodness truth, day traders make less money by and large than swing traders. Swing traders make less money by and large than position traders. It's absolutely the truth. Now the reason the, in the industry doesn't tell you that is because a position trader may put on a trade and hold that position for months. A broker doesn't make much money doing that. If they can encourage you to trade a hundred times a day, they make more money. You don't, but they do. Okay, so you really need to think about carefully what kind of a trader do you want to be? What's the lifestyle that you want to be into? The day trader is locked in front of their screens. The swing trader has a bit more freedom. The position trader has even more freedom. And then you need to decide, am I going to start out in stock trading, option trading, forex trading, futures trading? You name it, there's a hundred different ways to trade. What are you going to specialize in? Now I'm not saying you have to stick with just one of them and be there forever, but you darn sure should stick with one until you find success. Don't think about adding something else until you gain some, some, some success in something. Okay? One of the things that's a, a trap that most people get into is they try to be the jack of all trades. They want to be, they want to know every strategy setup, they want to know every position set up they want to know every candlestick pattern that could be profitable they want to know every strategy of being an option trader a swing trader and all these things they want to do it all at the same time well how many of you guys think that that's actually possible it's not it's too fragmented your time is scattered all over the place you you can't focus on that many different things at once you know, one of the things early on with fighter jets, they put 
put a pilot in a fighter jet, and as they gained more and more automation, or more and more tricks and tools and gadgets and switches and things like that, what they started running into is pilot overload. The pilots couldn't take in all the data fast enough and react properly. So then they had to move to automation to make the decisions because the pilot is already taxed to the limit. Now, if you think about us, we're piloting our, piloting our trading um, career in, um, and we're trying to do everything all at once. We're not going to have much success doing that. We're probably going to crash and burn. Probably going to drive that plane straight into the ground if we keep that up. So one of the secrets here to get, get started and really get successful is you need to pick something and work to master that. Hey, Mick, how you doing? You want to work to master that. Um, successful traders find areas of strength and they, they're areas that they're strong in, places that they feel comfortable, comfortable and want to be, and they capitalize on them. Instead of trying to catch every single trade, focus on every single style, just pick something and stick to it until you start to see success, okay? So maybe step one for a lot of us is to slow down just a little bit. We're trying to race into the market and just think about it. We run into the market where there's a place where everybody there wants to take our money and we're not ready. It's a recipe for disaster, right? So how about we take a breath or two and work on getting ready or participate in a group or a room or something like that where you have support of other people where you can ask questions and stay engaged in what's going on, okay? That helps you move this along a little bit faster, but it still requires overtime. We used to have a, a member, he passed away um, a couple years back. Um, he went by Goofy Golfer in the room and he, he commonly posted in the room, good trading requires overtime. And I believe that to be true. You need to put in the time. I know after the market's closed, I require every single day, at least a minimum of 45 minutes every day where I've got nothing else on. The market's not running, nothing's on. It's just me, my charts, my paperwork I need to take care of, those kind of things where I'm focused for at least 45 minutes after everything's closed so that I can be prepared for the next day. And sometimes it takes a lot longer than that. And then usually on the weekends, usually on Sunday afternoon, I spend a couple hours, sometimes more, preparing for the week ahead. Okay, so maybe we need to slow down a little bit and catch our breath and really start focusing in on some guidelines like creating a trading plan. Now I talk about this a lot and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this tonight, but I got to tell you guys, if you don't have some kind of a plan, some kind of, kind of a plan that tells you how much you should risk in a trade, how much you can lose on a trade, what your goals are in a trade, okay? If you don't have some of that basics of, of a framework in your trading, you're making a terrible mistake. Okay, you're going to have probably more luck in living in your mother's basement because you've lost all of your money than you will be getting rich in the market unless you have a basic plan. You've got to know this is where I am right now. And this is where I want to be. And how am I going to get there? Okay. What is it going to take to move me up that staircase, that ladder, whatever you want to see it as? What's it going to take? How do I get over here? And by the way, what does success mean to you? I used to work with a guy years ago um, on the Everett City Council, and I'd 
you know, you'd see him in the morning, I'd say, hey, how you doing this morning? He'd say, fine as a frog's hair. I said, looks like you're pretty ha having a pretty good day. And he'd say, every day above ground is a good day. See, for him, every time he opened his eyes and he didn't see dirt, it was a good day. Okay? He was always happy. So what's success look like for you and how are you going to get there? Okay? That's right. It takes hard work to make easy money. You're exactly right. Thanks for bringing that up, Mike. So get some kind of a plan put together. If you don't know how to do that, get with somebody that can help you. Something that focuses you. Every single day when I sit down here at my desk, and actually I don't sit much, I stand at my desk, but when I come to work, I have a trade sheet or a, a guideline sheet right here in front of me. It tells me how much I can risk on a trade. It tells me what my annual goal is, my monthly goal, and my weekly goal. It tells me how much I can risk on a trade, and I write that out every Sunday. So when I come to work every morning, I have a plan of to what, as to what I'm supposed to do. I'm focused into what I am supposed to do. Okay, I'm not here to just play games or any of those kind of things. I'm here to work, and this is my plan. Okay, that helps you avoid all those emotional triggers and all of those hang-ups that most people run into in their trading. Okay, we need to develop some discipline after we write that plan to follow some rules. You know, there's a lot of folks, and, and I know I was one of them, and there's probably a lot of folks in here that have said, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to trade without a stop loss. And then what do you do the next time? There's a big rush. you got to hurry up into a trade. got to jump on this really quick, and you jump in. You don't plan a stop loss. You don't even know how much risk you have in the trade. But, man, i got to hurry up and get in this thing, and we break the rules. We're human beings. We're going to break rules. Okay, but we have to work hard. As retail traders, we are disadvantaged against the institutions. Okay, we have to work hard to discipline ourselves to follow a set of rules. And it's, it, there's really no choice. It's either you do it or just plan on failing. Okay? If you're not willing to follow a set of rules, do me a favor. Write me a check for half of what's in your account. Okay? And I promise you I will send you the results of how I manage that money. It's going to be mine, but I'm going to manage that money by a set of rules. And then I expect you to send me a thank you card or a Christmas card because I just saved you half of your money. Okay? That's how important I believe this is. If you're not willing to follow a set of rules, plan on losing your money. Okay? There's no easy way around this. There's no easy button that says, no, I don't have to do that. I can just do whatever I want. Well, keep doing what you're doing and keep getting what you're getting or be willing to change and fix those problems so that you can get on the right side of that balance sheet. Okay? Again, like I wrote here, it seems obvious, but this is where most people fall into a trap. They don't set rules and they won't follow them. Okay? We have to get that in place. And I can't stress that enough, and I'm not trying to be mean or preachy here. It's just a hard fact. Every single one of the institutional traders out there has a set of rules that the company gives them that they must follow or they're fired. Those rules are there for a purpose. Okay? If they have to do that to be successful, what does that mean for us? 
that we can just ignore it and do whatever we want. Okay. Actually, see, I have a an ebook out there. If you go um, onto YouTube to the series, just click playlist on the Right Way Options channel. Click playlist and go to the series on consistent profits. There's an ebook attached to it that's called um, Strategy for Consistent Profits. I think is what it's called, and in the back of it is my base set of rules that I follow. Okay. Now, that's a place to start from, but you have to create your own because we're all different people. We have different circumstances. We have different account sizes. We have different experience and things like that. My rules evolved as I, you know, learned and traded and and um, developed the discipline. Okay. But that's available for you to just take a baseline set of rules and start working on creating yours, okay? Now, when I talk about rules, I'm not talking about, or a trading plan, I'm not talking about, you know, 20 handwritten pages or typewritten pages, double space, all this, of all the different rules and all the different things you have to follow. Yeah, there's a, there's a copy right there. That's how simple it is for me. Keep it simple. There's a baseline set of rules that I follow. Okay. And I think we as traders oftentimes overcomplicate everything. You know, technicians by and large, they're very detail oriented. You know, they want to figure out every little thing. They, you know, we get all excited about, you know, the different indicator that just came out that looks like it's going to, you know, predict the future of the market, which we soon find out doesn't do any of that. And we overcomplicate our trading with too much stuff. Again, we're trying to be the jack of all trades. We want to be the swing trader, the day trader, the position trader. We want to trade options and futures and everything else all at the same time. Okay. We need to simplify our trading. And that means, for me, it meant simplifying my charts. The number one indicator out there in charting, and by the way, guys, Rick says this, I repeat this over and over. There's nothing new under the sun when it comes to trading. Nothing new under the sun. All of the indicators are based off of three simple inputs, time, volume, and price movement. Okay. They put a different shiny little spin on them. They try to give you this. Um, they cherry pick stocks all the time to show you how great this works. But we've all followed stochastics and MACD and all of these different things that people swear by. Man, you can't trade without them. But is it working for you? Simplify your trading. Stop using indicators to predict what's going to happen next. Let the indicator help you follow what the chart is telling you. And you'll have a whole lot more success in trading. Simplify your charts. Simplify your trading plan. Simplify what you do every single day, that it's a structured event that you do these things throughout the day. Okay, Those kind of things will make you much more successful way faster if you keep put that stuff together keep it simple this like i said this may include charts setups what you look for tools you use keep it simple okay don't overwhelm yourself with too much data that really doesn't matter because the only thing that makes us money and people will argue this until the day they die There's never been a stochastics indicator, a MACD indicator, a moving average, a, any indicator out there that's ever paid you a penny. We will spend all of our time trying to create the perfect scan, the perfect setup, the perfect chart that's going to tell us when we're going to, you know, every time this happens, I'm going to get rich using it. 
and we spend almost no time studying what actually pays us, and that's price. We need to focus on what price is doing more than anything else. What is price doing? The indicators are there to maybe help us see what price is doing, not to predict anything for us. We have to evaluate the price action, so get it simple. Break it down to its simplest forms, okay? We have to learn to limit losses. Now, as long as I've been doing this, as long as I've been working to help people and teach people in trading, I still get kickback on this. Well, if I use a stop loss, you know, the, the market swings down and it stops me out and then it goes on up. I, I can't use stop losses because I just get stopped out. Well, maybe you may want to consider that you're not setting your stop losses properly. If your stop losses are getting constantly triggered, you've got a problem with setting stop losses. So the stop loss isn't the fault. You are creating the mistake and repeating it over and over. And that's creating your losses with stop losses. See, we all can only lose so much amount of money before it causes us real problems in our account, our family, our home, all of those things. We can only lose so much money before our career in trading is quickly stopped. So to think that you can trade the market with never having a loss, a stop loss in, um, in play in the market is foolish. We have to be able to manage our risk or we're out of business fast. It's just like any other business. <clears throat> yeah, volatility does that really quick, doesn't it, Victoria? <laughs> it really does. We also, <clears throat> trainers I work with all the time, Greed causes lots of problems. You know, Mike Peterson was here, and the reason I pick on Mike, he's a good friend of mine, um, lives just, you know, down the road from me about three and a half miles if I walk it. And um, Mike has a major talent that I don't have that, that I would guess that the majority of folks don't have. And one of his major talents is he doesn't have a greedy bone in his body. And no greed. The, when he made that 65% return in his trading over the course of his first year, and by the way, you can go out and watch a video on YouTube where I interviewed Mike about that. His average winning trade was $125. <clears throat> what Mike does is he's ruthless on both of these. He's ruthless at cutting off a loss. And when the price is moving in his direction, he's ruthless at taking profits. Get out of my way. That money is mine. He's a master of stacking up $100 bills. And you know what? You just keep stacking them up at the end of the month. That pile gets pretty nice. Let me ask you guys, how many of you have had profits? Let's use, you could use this week if you want, or over the last month, where you've had several hundred dollars in profits on a trade, but didn't take it. And now it's gone. Or it's a lot less than it was. <clears throat> Could you guys imagine how many, how much your account would be different right now if you'd have just taken profits in those trades when they were winners? You know, it's, it's interesting. The people who tend to fail to limit losses are the same people that fall victims to the greed on the other side.
Okay, because, well, I got to hurry up. I got to make up these losses. So I can't take this profit. It's not enough. I, you know, it, it, and here's the, here's the other thing. <laughs> the stock breaks down and they don't have a stop loss. And they say, oh, it's going to bounce back. It's going to bounce back. It's going to bounce back. And then it really goes down. Okay. And then they get in the long trade. Oh, it's going up. It's going up. It's going to, I'm going to get rich. I'm going to, it's, it's good. And then it goes down. And all the money's gone. And it's the same problem on both sides. They don't have a plan. No plan. No goals. Okay. So think about that, guys. How can you improve your trading by just avoiding these two common mistakes a little bit less? Okay. Oftentimes people come to me and I ask them, How's your, what's your win-loss ratio? And people will tell me, well, I'm, I'm pretty much a 50-50 trader. I win about half my trades. I lose about half my trades. Do you guys know that you could probably become a 60-40 trader? just by fixing a couple of these things here and maybe a couple of these things here and right there you're making money isn't it worth doing well i can tell you it is for me it was for mike and it's it is for a lot of folks that i've worked with over time if they just correct a couple of things all of a sudden their win loss comes up and they're making money consistently. Okay. We're always reaching for that next little dollar. Man, if it just and isn't this truth with the implied with the volatility that we have? For you here that are option traders, you can have a really nice profit in the trade. The next morning the market gaps down a little bit. And even though it hasn't even come close to your stop loss. All of the profit in the trade is gone. Right? We were waiting for just, we waited, we're waiting for that black candle. Okay, that black candle is when I'll get out. When the black candle comes, there's no money left. Because we let greed prevent us to ta from taking that profit when the market was giving it to us. I want you to think about these things because these are the things that I know to be truths that fixed me. And believe me, I needed a lot of fixing. Okay, I made all the mistakes that you guys have made and probably a thousand more. I had lots of bad habits that I had to fix. I had to be willing to change. And it wasn't so much about my charting, my signals, my scans. The things I had to change were, were things about me my discipline, my rules, my willingness to follow them. And then my trading changed. Okay. Recording your trading. <clears throat> um, and I'm not talking about turning on a, a video camera and recording yourself trading. I'm talking about recording every single trade. I bought this. At this time, I paid this much money for it. I sold it here. This was my profit. Those are the bare minimums. Okay. This was my loss. Okay. Because if we don't record our trading, if we don't record our, our um, activity throughout the day or throughout the week or throughout the month, we can't learn anything about our trading. See, we learn from our losses. I'll, I'll tell you honestly, I really don't learn much from my winning trades. I learn about me and my trading and the problems that I have and the places that I can make corrections to get more winners by studying my losers. Okay? We all lose money. That's all there is to it. It's a risk business. I have to evaluate my losing trades. 
<clears throat> and I used to do this at the end of every week. As a matter of fact, I tell this story all the time, but, but for no, those here who are new, my wife can't stand this. I mean, she can't stand trading or risking money like this just drives her. I mean, she just, she can't even watch me do it. But I taught her enough about what my rules were. I asked her to hold me accountable to my rules at the end of every week. I knew at the end of every week I had to go over every single trade I made with her and have her hold me accountable to my rules. Now, if you want that pucker moment, make your have your spouse hold you accountable to your rules. Okay? Every time I pulled the trigger on the trade, am I following my rules? Am I going to have to answer for this? Okay. So we learn from our losses. We need to look at our losses far more than our winners. It's kind of like the gambler out there. The gambler out there, if you sit talk with gamblers that come back from Vegas or Reno or wherever it is, they're always winners, aren't they? Hey, I came home a winner, got money. They're always winners. They talk about their winning trades or winning bets over and over and over. How many times do they sit down and discuss with you the losers that they have? Never. But that's where we need to focus as traders. We need to focus on what's not working so that we can fix it. Okay? So I want you guys to, it doesn't have to be fancy, get out a notebook. Some people go, you know, to spreadsheets and they get really fancy with it. And that's okay if you're committed to following it. Okay? But you should be writing down, at a minimum, writing down your trades and finding out what's working and what's not. And here's the easy thing, guys. When you find out what's working, do more of that. When you find out what's not working, do less of that. And all of a sudden, you're making money. But you can't find that out unless you evaluate it. If you repeat the same mistakes over and over and over, that's one of the things that most people do in trading that get so frustrated things aren't working. It's getting, they're just so mad at themselves in the market because nothing seems to work. But what they do is they repeat the same mistake over and over and over. And they do it without knowledge that they're even doing it because they're not recording anything. Okay, so make sure you're doing those things. Be patient. You know, like I said in the beginning, it may be time to slow down a little bit. If you don't know how to use your tools, if you haven't studied how to set orders properly or any of those things, maybe slow down and be a little bit more patient. But the other thing I mean about being patient is sometimes you got to be willing to just sit there and let the market go by and not take a trade if there's no setup. And honestly, that's one of the hardest ones. How many of you find on these choppy days that we've had recently, it's really hard not to just take trade because you're bored? Okay. So we have to be willing to sit on our hands from time to time and be patient for our trade to set up. Now, you can keep scouring through thousands of charts and try to find that trade every single day, sure. But I'll tell you this, most people find more success if they narrow their field down and say, I'm only looking at these charts. <clears throat> these are, this, is my, this is my group of charts that I'm gonna be managing and paying attention to, and I'm waiting until one of those charts are ready. Because the truth of the matter is, guys, I don't need, and I know you don't either, I don't need too many winning trades over the course of a week or over the course of a month to make a lot of money. Okay? I just need a few good ones. And I have to be patient and be willing to wait for them to come to me. Not to be chasing or rushing or, or all of those things. I have to develop that patience to wait for the trade. Okay. 
Now, being prepared, I talked about that in just a little bit, how I need about 45 minutes in the evening, markets closed, nothing else, just me and my charts, okay? So that I can feel prepared the next day. Now, whatever that takes for you to come to the market feeling prepared, you need to do that, okay? When we come to the market, and, and, and I find this so often, people wake up five minutes before the market opens and they stumble into their trading room and turn on their computer and they're still, you know, sipping on their coffee and trying to wipe the sleep out of their eyes and, yeah, I'm ready to trade. No, you're not. Okay, come to the market prepared to trade. If you're not prepared to trade, stand aside and be willing to recognize when that's the case. I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. I haven't looked at any charts. Things were busy last night and it's okay. Life happens. Okay, but don't come to the market unprepared. Success is driven by folks who come prepared. <clears throat> um, I, I, don't, I tell people anymore when I talk to high school friends and stuff like that about what I do and kind of, you know, the success and stuff that I've had, the money that I've made in, in trading. And wow, I, you got to teach me how to do that. And I said, yeah, you know, it's only taken me 30 years to be an overnight success. You got to be willing to put in the time and be prepared. Okay, just like anything else. Anything else in the world. Okay. So you need to look at that. Are you prepared every single day? Are you sick? Are you compromised? Don't trade. Okay, because you're likely going to make a mistake. Consistency. I worry more about consistency in my trading than anything else. Okay. <clears throat> I don't worry about hitting home runs. People in right way options will know if if I have a big winner, it's no more it's no more exciting to me than the one that I just took a nice profit on it, you know, whatever it was, 10, 15, 20%. Okay? Because all I'm worried about is the consistency. And I'm not talking about the consistency of grabbing all kinds of money. I'm talking about the consistency of my entries and the consistency of my profit taking. Okay, am I entering correctly? Am I exiting correctly? That's the consistency that I'm looking for. And when I do that, guys, my PL graph, whoops. My PL graph goes like this. I have consistency. I don't take major drawdowns in the market. I lose just like everyone else, but I cut my losses off. Okay? I have no pride and no ego in the trade. I invest none of my ego in the trade. This is just a business decision. It either works or it doesn't, has nothing to do with my ego. Okay, my consistency is making sure that I am following my rules and my guidelines. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is where I'm supposed to exit. Did I follow my rules? That's the consistency that I want to work for because I know if I do that, my track record stays around 70% win loss ratios. I make money because I stay consistent. Okay? It's just business. It's not emotional. I don't invest any of myself into it. This is the trade. This is the setup. Hit the entry, close the trade, did a profit. That's the only thing that matters to me. Okay? <clears throat> You know, Rick often says that trading is, is 
a marathon, not a sprint. And I even have a, something in here in this presentation about that. But it's a long-term game. And if we don't look for consistency, you know, like this example I gave in basketball, you know, we're going to do a whole lot better if we get consistency in hitting those two-point shots instead of trying to make that half-court shot over and over and over again. Teams aren't going to win. Players aren't going to win when they do that. The simple basic over and over. Hitting base hit after base hit after, after base hit. That wins games and it grows accounts. Okay. <clears throat> we need to monitor our emotions. <clears throat> what I was saying before is don't trade under duress. If you're sick, don't trade. You know, if your, <clears throat> you know, your best buddy dog happen, uh, you know, dies, take a day off or two. You're compromised. You've had a fight with your spouse and you're all angry. Take some time away from the computer. Don't trade. We have to be willing to recognize when we're compromised. Another thing is I didn't get any sleep last night or I just haven't had time to even look at a chart. I'm not prepared. Don't trade. Okay. Be willing to evaluate yourself and your behavior. Okay. Assessing your own behavior. What's causing What's causing a problem? I always say in the room that if I feel like I have to rush to a trade, I'm making a mistake. <clears throat> you shouldn't have to feel that way. So think about those things that you're doing every day that's compromising or putting you under duress in the market. Over stress, over stimulation, or pushing too hard. It's creating problems in our trading. Not only there, but it may be creating some problems in your health and your relationships with your family. Okay? This is a, a common thing that people talk about all the time, revenge trading, and we all know what that is. We lose money in the market, and then we just want to get right back in and get the next... And the funny thing is, we often we look at the exact same chart. I am going to get this money back on this chart rather than going to a better trade setup and getting your money back there in a much easier way. We want to revenge trade that chart. Get my money back. I'll show you. You're welcome, Misha. Hope you got something out of this. So in essence, what I'm telling you is to be a, be a tough boss on yourself as the trader. Be a tough boss. Meaning you hold yourself accountable. You expect more of yourself every day. You expect that you're going to be on time and prepared and ready. That your rules are in place. You know what you're here to do. Okay? And the more we work on ourselves as traders, the better our trader trading becomes. You know, we think all the time, if I could just learn this, this perfect entry or this perfect setup or this perfect set of indicators or this perfect scan, that's going to make me rich. Now, while those tools are very important, okay, those aren't the things that are going to make you rich. Because even if you have the perfect indicator that tells you when you're supposed to get in the trade, do you have the discipline to do it and follow through and manage it correctly? The scan tells me this is a, the trade. Do I hesitate? Do I fail to take it? What do, how can I turn a great trade setup into a loser? And we've all done that, right? Had a great trade setup. And we turned it into a loser because of us, not because of the trade. So be that tough boss on yourself. Okay, we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be willing to look at that guy in the mirror and say, buddy, you're screwing up. Get it together. The more we work on ourselves, the better traders we become. Okay, so think about those things. And, uh, and guys, I'll give you a chance here to ask some questions if you have some as, 
as I finish up here, but set some goals. Um, I talk about the power of base hits. I talked about how Mike Peterson stacks up $100 bills. In fact, Mike used to say in the room, guys, it's a whole lot easier to find a trade that'll make you 100 bucks than it is to have find one that's going to make you 500 The difference is when he hits that $100 bill, he takes it. Now it's his. Okay? Set some goals. He does that because he has these goals in mind that this is where I'm going to realize some gains. I'm going to grab that money and now it's mine. Okay, so you need to know when you're going to take profits and why you should be taking profits. And the why is because this reaches my goal for this week or today or this month. That's the why. I'm growing my account. That's the why. I'm here to make money, not to be a hero. Not to hit the perfect entry and the perfect exit. My goal is to make money. So close the trade and make money. Okay. Learning to adapt. We've experienced here recently where we went through a period in the market where it was just all up. It was just racing to the upside. Everything was buy. You could ignore every rule in the book and buy something and it would probably eventually go up and you'd make money. Robert, hey, take care. Have a good one. I'm about to finish up. But I want you to think about that for um, for a second. We've went through that period, and now we're in this period where the market's very choppy, very volatile. Price action swings big, big point moves every day. But we're still trying to, to trade the exact same way we were trading a year ago. And we're wondering why it's not working. Okay, we haven't adapted to the new condition in the market. And the market changes all the time. Okay, it's always going through these ebbs and flows and changes and we have to, as traders, we have to adapt to that. Those that don't adapt, do what I call yo-yo trading. Anybody see if this fits you? Yo-yo trading is where you have periods of time where you just feel like you're brilliant. You're making money like crazy. It's just everything's working, you're just making money. And then the next period is you're losing it all right back to the market. You're yo-yoing that account up and down. It, it never gets a whole lot better because it goes up and just swinging up and down. It never really leaves those two ranges. And then we lose confidence. Right? Everything we thought we knew was right, now we question everything. And instead of instead of recognizing the problem, the market changed and I have to adapt, we throw out the whole, the whole trading strategy and we, try to, we start all over again. We, we start with something, we know it worked, what's the problem? We don't fix the problem, now we just go out and we try to find a whole new thing that's going to get us rich quick because man, I can't stand this anymore, I keep losing money instead of looking at what we're doing wrong and fixing it. There's probably nothing wrong with the strategy. It's how we're adapting to the condition of the market that makes a different difference. Okay? Now we can make tons and tons of money in the market. No doubt about it. Every day I show up to work, the money is already there. I just have to figure out how to go get my piece of it. Okay, money's there. It's the only business I've ever been to where the, I show up and the money's already there. I just got to go get it. Okay. I've been doing this for 30 years, more than 30 years. And, and I will tell you this right now that every single month and every single year, I work to improve myself as a trader. Because... I'll never be perfect. You'll never reach what I wrote here. You'll never reach a pinnacle. There's no pinnacle. Okay? So we always have room for improvement and we should be working all the time into 
uh, just working to improve just a little bit at a time, find that mistake, become more efficient. How can I do this better? Okay, how can I improve my profitability? Okay, by doing this or doing this. Okay, always room for improvement and adapting is one of the ways we do that. The last thing I'm going to talk about, and this is kind of um, near and dear, it may come um, a little, feel a little bit personal to you, depending on how you came to trading. But I really want to caution everyone to don't be drinking the Kool-Aid that's out there. Um, you get all of the emails, you get all of these things, how people are getting rich quick. They're, oh my gosh, it's like they never lose a trade. They never do any of this thing. You know, they're just perfect traders. And I'm going to call BS on all of it. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. Okay, don't get caught up in that hype. Remember, for every trade that you make, there's someone on the other side of that trade working against you. That's the way the market works. It's the only way the market works. Is there somebody on the other side of that trade thinking exactly the opposite? Okay? So avoid the hype. Nobody's going to win all the time. This isn't a race to get rich quick. It's a marathon that we want to run for a long period of time using a good trading plan. Okay? We're not here to gamble. Okay? And I say good trading is neither one, hyper gambling. It's a well thought out plan. Where you do your research, you identify repeating high probability setups and then we work every single day to exploit those setups with a business mindset. Just taking our piece out of the market. Okay? There is so much hype today. Social media is filled with it. It's insidious and it's dangerous. It's, it's killing so many people. And, and what I mean by killing them, it's crushing their accounts, it's taking their money. Because everyone's out there trying to grab, you know, they want the golden ring. They're, they're reaching out as far as they can and they're doing everything they can to reach that golden ring. But, you know, at the other end of that golden ring, it, it, it kind of looks a lot like a hook, okay? <laughs> and it's a shark holding that, holding onto that hook and you get munched. Your account gets munched, okay? There's no easy way to get rich in the market. It takes work. It's just like any other job. You got to put your time and effort in. You got to be disciplined. You got to be focused. You got to follow a set of rules. You got to do the things that we talked about. Now, what I just talked about in this presentation is what I know to be absolute truths for me. Things that I know that made me successful in trading. I'm not saying every single one of these is a problem or an issue that you have, but I'll tell you, the majority of people that I work with individually, these problems crop up all the time. And I think if you're honest with yourself, you have seen several things in here that you've kind of given lip service true to. Okay? But you haven't really followed through. Okay. It's real easy as a trader when we're talking to friends and family and, oh, how's that trading? Oh, man, it's great. I'm doing great. This is just all good. And inside, you know, you're not doing great. It's really easy to convince yourself you're doing better than you are, kind of like that gambler that comes back from Vegas and, boy, I was a winner. I won this great big pot. Of course, I, I lost $5,000 before that, but, hey, I won this great big pot. So hopefully you found something in this that can be helpful. And I know this wasn't that sexy um, uh, presentation, but I think it's a presentation that a lot of people need to see what real trading really is. Okay. 
So do you guys have any questions for me um, after I'm listening to that? Um, you know, there's, there's things that you can do and start right now to, to start turning things around. First one is, it's just making the commitment. Recommit yourself to being a better trader. Okay, that sets you on a new path. I'm gonna make this decision. I'm gonna get my plan in place. I'm gonna get my, <clears throat> I'm gonna understand you know, my tools. I'm gonna to know how to do what I, I need to do. You don't have to know everything a broker does. You just need to know the things that you need to utilize to be successful in your trading. Okay, you need to get those things in order. You need to start working on the discipline to follow your rules. So you can make that decision right now and say, I'm going to turn this corner and I'm going to, I'm going to improve. Uh, no, I didn't, Byron. Um, I tried like everyone else. I tried all different kinds of things. Okay. I tried to, you know, I used to spend, I, I wish I had the, the, the months and even the years back that I tried to create the perfect setup with the perfect scan to help me find it every time. Anybody willing to admit that you've wasted tons and tons of time doing just that? <clears throat> we, we have to fix those things and and for me, it was just that realization uh, of just knowing that I, I'll never be a perfect trader. I have this thing when I, even when I car, I do wood carving. And when I carve it, I want to carve things realistic. I want it to look good, you know, the first time. I've always had that problem. Do it right the first time or don't do it. The thing is with trading, it's, it's a learning experience that you do that you're always working to improve. You will never be perfect. Okay? You'll never win every trade. The market will disappoint you. Things will happen. Okay. Uh, David, no. Cut your losses means that I plan my trade to my stop loss before I enter the trade. I know how much I'm risking on the trade before I enter, and either that risk is acceptable or it's not. If the risk to my stop loss is not acceptable, that's not a trade for me and I look for another trade. And I don't care if Warren Buffett knocks on my door and says, Campbell, you need to buy this trade. This thing's gonna change your life. If I look at the trade and it doesn't fit my plan, my style, my comfort level for risk, I don't trade it, okay? I don't micromanage trades by cutting stop losses before the trust stop is hit because there's no more risk. If I have managed that trade from the entry and said, this is how much I'm willing to risk on this trade, and that trade provides that much risk, there's no reason for me to close that trade before my stop loss is hit. Because nothing has changed. That's micromanagement. That's a terrible problem that's hard to break for people. It's that emotional trade that happens when we get that, we get that entry signal. The stock has been moving up. We find a, maybe a nice little pop here, a nice entry signal. We jump on that trade, and then the next day, the candle jumps up and does this, and man, we close the trade. Oh my gosh, i got to get out of it. Tell me. You haven't done that. We've all done that, right? And then the next day it does this. And you, you created your own loss. It wasn't the market, you did. Because you didn't follow the rules of your trade. My stop loss was here, my risk tolerance was to here, nothing had changed. Stay with the trade.
Uh, Byron, if I'm trading a position trade, meaning a longer, a little bit longer term position, I use weeklies. If I'm swing trading, I use the daily chart. Okay. And by the way, I don't go back and forth between the two. That's a distinction that I've been able to make growing, growing from a swing trader to a position trader is that if I'm position trading this trade, I manage it by the weekly chart. Not the weekly, nothing else. I manage it by the weekly chart. If I'm swing trading, I manage it by the daily chart. Not an hourly chart. Not a four-hour chart. The hourly chart. That's the chart that brought me to the trade. That's the chart I'm going to dance with. Um, IRA, um, <clears throat> um, I, I really don't have time to teach support, resistance, and trend tonight. I've got a lot of videos on YouTube about that, support, resistance, and trade, price action trading. Um, <clears throat> if, if, if you want to be able to ask me that any single day, any day, okay, you can go to the Hit Run Candlesticks website and you can become a trial member. <clears throat> it's a full member. You're going to be in all of the all of the training, everything we do, and you can ask me any question, and I will take the time, as much time as I need to, to go over support, resistance, and trend so that you can understand it as best as possible. But here's the thing. I can only take you so far by teaching you support, resistance, and trend. Then you have to do the work. People will ask me this question, you know, I watch you do this and you draw these lines really quick and you know where the support is and the trend is and the resistance is and it's just like that. How do you do that? <clears throat> and I usually tell people, go draw 10,000 charts and then come back and ask me that question. Okay. Because when you go through that much effort to learn it, you'll have it. You'll learn it. You'll, you'll never be able to look at a chart the same way. You'll look at a chart and you'll just see support, resistance, and trend. Okay? So if you come or, or want to become a trial member or something like that, um, or, you know, we'd love to have you as a full member, but... Um, you can ask that question any point in time during the day, during the live sessions that we do. And I do live session, sessions every single day. Okay. I'm usually on in the morning before the, I mean, as, at the market open. And I'm usually on for 45 minutes to an hour. I break away for about 30 minutes or so. So I can handle some correspondence and do some, some things. And at 11 p.m. Eastern time, I'm on the microphone in front of everyone until 1 p.m. Eastern Time every day. And you can ask me any question. Okay? And I'll take as much time as, I, as it needs to to answer that question. And in fact, I don't even mind. You can ask anybody here that's a Right Way Options member that I don't care how many times I have to explain it over again. I'll try to come up with a different way to explain it to help you get it. Okay, um, I don't mind repeating it because I know for me as a trader, I had to go over things over and over and over and over before it finally clicked. So I'm more than willing to do that for everyone as well, to help you see that, to understand it. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, thanks, John. There's the link if you guys want to try and become a member, a trial member, and it's you, you get access to everything. Okay. And, well, and I think Carol will tell you that even today, it doesn't matter what the question is. I'll take as much time as I can to explain it, right, Carol? <laughs> and it doesn't matter if you ask me the same thing tomorrow. I'll do it again. And, and it doesn't matter um, because, you know, my success in trading is, has been made. I, I um, you know, if, if I wanted to work a lot less, I'd just close up the trading room and I just trade 
and I'm fine. But I have this passion for helping people improve their trading. And because I hated that place that I was in, that I call trading purgatory, that it was just a struggle all the time. There's so much hype, it's hard to know what's true, what's right, what's accurate. Um, so I committed myself to doing this and I truly, truly enjoy it. It's the thing that gets me up every day. You, you know, what I do is so simple and so repeatable, I just repeat the same thing over and over. It's actually boring because I just do the same thing over and over and over. Okay. And it's, it's actually, it, it gets me up every morning, morning to try and help somebody improve their trading. Okay. Anything else I can help with quick before we go? Or I had to take a drink. Anybody that talks as much as me, jeez. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope you got something out of this. I hope it made some sense to you. I'll continue to do these, these um, public e-learnings and things like that, and, and maybe in some e-learnings in, um, in live on YouTube and, and things like that as time allows. So keep looking back, and if you guys have a suggestion, something that you'd like me to do, like if you want me to do a, a public e-learning that's just on support resistance and trend, I'll do it. If you, you know, um, I'm happy to do those things. So give me that suggestion and next time it comes around, I'll try to do that specific thing. Okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate you all very much for being here. I want to wish you all a fantastic evening and I wish you great success in your trading tomorrow. Take care, and for RWO and HRC members, I'll see you first thing in the morning with the Morning Market Prep. Thanks, John, very kind. Thanks, Carol, thanks, Mura. You guys are awesome, I appreciate it. You're very welcome, Gupta. Take care and have a good evening, everyone.